Welcome, everyone, to Birth 2012 News. This is Stephen Dynan, and we are br coming to you live from Hollywood today. This is our first live shoot, so it's an exciting moment for us as we gear up for the Birth 2012 broadcast next Friday and Saturday. And we're going to be bringing you more live shows over the coming days to really help you catch the excitement of what's happening, to feel the buzz around the world, to share all these activities. But first, we're going to begin today with um, one of our, our two guests is going to lead us in three minutes of love. And we're doing this because part of creating the movement of Birth 2012 is creating a field of love around the planet. And we've activated a campaign at 3daysoflove.com for people to take seriously the creation of love for three days. So we're practicing each day with three minutes. So I'm going to introduce Doug DeVito, who's with us. He's the leader of Catch the Wave and one of the main architects of the Teotihuacan events with Don Miguel Ruiz and one of the key activators of things globally. So thank you so much for joining us, Doug, and lead us in three minutes of love. Well, absolutely a pleasure to be here, Stephen. And so what I'd like everybody to begin just doing is just get into a comfortable place and allow yourself to just center and perhaps just take a deep breath. And as you breathe in, allow yourself to just feel energy flow into your feet from the earth. And as you breathe in again, allow that energy to flow up into your legs. And as you breathe in again, allow that energy to flow into your core and into your stomach. And as you breathe in again, you feel the energy centers of your body start to activate, to charge to fill with love and energy. And as you breathe in again, start to express that and feel that energy within your heart, within your body, within your entire being. And perhaps if you'd like, you may start to feel those energies flow between your hands. And you may start to feel and sense. Perhaps while you're out there, you may feel a sense of tingling or vibration or pulsing or a sensation of cold or some sensation of warmth. Whatever it is that you're feeling, just notice and observe and allow that to flow into and resonate through your heart, through your body. You can close your eyes if you like and just allow yourself to immerse and to just be in that powerful state of charged, activated love and energy and start to feel that, feel your body, feel your head, feel your heart, feel your body, feel that connect to the, to the earth itself and start to fill the room Feel the area around you, feel the state, feel the world with that loving connection. And just allow yourself to be present in a connected, loving, powerful state, recognizing that there are thousands and millions and billions around you accessing this potential portal of love, this loving energy that will strengthen and empower you and will help to shift the planet. So just be present in that. Just enjoy, immerse and allow yourself to just be in a state of love. And feel that, and connect, and notice what your body feels like. Notice what your heart feels like, and just share that resonance, that power, that love with the earth and the world around you. And as we begin, thank you very much. Thank you, Doug. beautiful way to begin and I think part of the part of the discipline I think of creating these events worldwide is to remember that we have to be the change the whole way through we can't just do frenetic production or be mean to each other oftentimes production can get very intense and to the practice of opening as we produce these events is uh, is a spiritual practice and Stephen Powers who's also with us um, first I want to say Stephen Powers has been a godsend for us because at, at a late stage of the game when we were really needing a first-class producer to come on board Stephen is a head of C a CEO of Agape Media International works closely with Agape and helps to or orchestrate many of their media out and uh, events. And so, Stephen, I'd just love for you to share a little bit about what what's exciting you about producing this event. 
Well, first, it's, it's the global nature of it, right? It's the fact that for, for my whole life, I've had a sense that we are one world. That was something that I was really gifted with that understanding. I've never been a nationalist, right? So for me, it's the fact that we're bringing people together from all around the world, from Egypt, from Mexico, where Doug will be, from Australia, from Europe. And, and so that connection for me has always been strong. And it's just such a joy and an honor to really be able to be kind of in a in a center place uh, of, of bringing that to, to everyone else, that mm. sense that I've long had and that this production represents. So mm. I think that's one aspect of it. And then I think there's a, the, other, the other piece that really resonates for me is just what we just experienced, which mm -hmm. is love, mm -hmm. right? That this is at its center is about love. It's a communication of love. Mm -hmm. It's a being of love. It's an experience of love. So it's mm. those two things. And then I get to bring my gifts and talents as a producer, as a creative individual, you know, I, I get to deliver them. Those. So mm -hmm. I'm always about where can I deliver, where can I give, how can I serve, and this has been a big opportunity to serve. <laughs> yeah, it has been. <laughs> it keeps getting bigger every day. <laughs> Fortunately, <laughs> it's done in a week. <laughs> so, know, of course, that'll be the new beginning. Yeah. <laughs> before before we go over to Doug, I want I'd love for you to share a little bit. You've been a part of the Agape community for a long time, yes. and what one thing I've been uh, felt very guided to bring the event here, and over time, it's become more and more evident why. Mm -hmm. But I want you, in your own words, to share why the template of what Agape is created is so important to share with the larger world. Love to, absolutely. So agape, for those who don't know, means universal love. Mm -hmm. It's a Greek word. We have agape, we have eros, romantic love, we have philos, brotherly love. So many people are like, what is agape? Is it a gate? It's a universal love at its center. And uh, it's a community that is spiritual but not religious. So it is non-denominational and trans-denominational. And we are as interested in the wisdom of Buddha and Krishna and Muhammad and Jesus and all the great avatars of our time, including many who are coming forth today who have such great wisdom. And so in that sense, it's a great place because it represents, again, that global nature that I just spoke to because we're pulling together that wisdom all around. Um, and as a community, as you mentioned, what we really focus on is not just uh, the thinking about this, not just the mm -hmm. mental awareness of it, but the daily practice of it in mm -hmm. our lives. Mm -hmm. So it is a community that is very rich and deep with talent of all sorts, mm -hmm. whether it's Academy Award winning producers and directors, uh, people like Hilary Swank, Christina Applegate, uh, Will I Am, you know, and these are some people who, who we may be able to see during the gala on Saturday the 22nd uh, that we've invited to come down who have been at Agape, Alanis Morissette. It's just, and then, and then people whose names you don't know who are, mm -hmm. who are so talented. Mm -hmm. and, and it just is a community that is always in practice right. of how do we love. Yeah, well, what I've really been struck by just in my brief engagements with the community is the level of awakened energy mm -hmm. and also heartfeltness. I feel a little mm -hmm. bit just like kind of blissed out talking to people after a while. In fact, mm -hmm. it's going to be sometimes hard to have a production meeting because I'll be like a little bit dreamy <laughs> afterwards because yeah, people are really just filled with the spirit and, sp and pouring that through and really embodying it. Exactly. And their language reflects that and their, their acting, actions reflect that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's just that's, that's part of what I enjoy about it. Right. Great. And, and and also, we are a uh, pretty highly technically developed right. community in terms of the capability of Agape to bring an event like this to the world, to have it really have a high quality, which people enjoy. Great. Well, let's bring it, Doug. I want, to, I want you to jump in and share a little bit about what, first what drew you into such a deep, committed role with manifesting <laughs> the birth, with all of this birthing work and awakening work around this time period. Um, you know, honestly, th this happened in the strangest of ways. I was attending a birthday party. And it was Louise Hayes' birthday party, 83rd birthday party two years ago. And I was in the shower thinking, what does one give Louise Hay for a birthday gift? And I had no idea because, you know, what could you give that? And I closed my eyes. And the second I closed my eyes, I saw a vision of the world all lighting up in little pieces of glowing light. And I said, what was that? And I just felt like that's something that I'm supposed to do. And from that moment, without really understanding exactly why or what, I was drawn into the idea of lighting up the globe. Hmm. And there was this idea of how to do it and how to bring people together. And so the passion of always working with authors, as you know, I've worked with authors to help them you know, kind of get their message out. But it became a concerted, focused, passionate drive to try and make the globe light up. Hmm. And so for two years, I've been working with that. And then 
then it just led to increasingly, increasingly, increasingly centered connections. Mm -hmm. And it was through Don Miguel Ruiz that I met actually the same day that I met you at mm -hmm. Gate last mm -hmm. year. Yes. And I think I met you. And then Miguel had asked me to help out with the stuff that he was doing in Teotihuacan. And as we started to build that story, you and I connected. Mm -hmm. And I think it was just hmm. supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> so you've, you've activated this great campaign around Catch the Wave, 21 mm -hmm. Days of Light and Love, combining yep. your, your original vision with the impulse towards love. Absolutely. And love you share a bit about that and also this a piece that we haven't shared with people as much the scientists absolutely. that you're bringing together I think is very interesting absolutely well the idea of the fact that everybody can connect to this energy this love this power is something that I think what we're all doing will help people to understand I mean basically we are creating an awareness and education that allows people to become empowered and connected and, and, and able to connect to the fields of energy that we're creating, the fields of energy in the earth and the fields of energy around us. And what's amazing is, is that you don't have to be a healer. You don't have to study for 40 years anymore. You don't have to be an avatar. You don't have to go fast for 40 days in the desert and you can still eat meat and you can still do these things. And what's now happening is because the earth is shifting and our consciousness is shifting and perhaps it's just our time, we can all step into empowerment without the need to go into these you know, 40 year studies out in some ashram. Mm -hmm. And that's really passionate and powerful. Mm -hmm. And that's the way that people can understand through your efforts, through your efforts. And as we connect through love, as we connect through the loving field, that's what we want to express. And that's what Catch the Wave is all about. Beautiful. We want the mainstream people to understand that you too can connect through love, through heart, through energy, and by sharing this stuff. And mm. that's really what we're, we're about. So on a practical level, one of the things, anybody who is a healer or just as a meditator, yeah. prayer, just joining in this whole period now, Absolutely. really making a concerted practice to be sending that out, not Absolutely. just the three days of love, but the whole period now. Every single day at 12 o'clock, actually at 12.12, which is interesting, it's 12.12, at 12.12, mm -hmm. every single day we're asking all of the healers, all of the meditators, all of the yogis, all of the conscious people, and people just like you, and you don't have to be a healer, just express, connect and yes. feel love and share. Just mm -hmm. feel that energy in your body, connect to the earth, connect to the area around you, connect to everything, and just be present for three minutes at 12. 12, 12 every single day and what we do is we already have scientists in place all over the world scientists like Konstantin Karatkov, Dean Radin from IONS, we have um, Melinda Connor from National Energy Healing Foundation nine different independent science research teams have already been deployed in different places and they will start to be well they're already starting to measure as of 12 12 they started their baseline measurements so every day they're reporting and they're connecting and we'll have updates about what we see as we go hmm. and I know that this is going to be built intuitively, mm. we know that this is going to build to something very profound during three days of love and very profound during the 21st and yeah. the 22nd. Mm. Well, I know what's going to happen is people who are, are participating are going to feel something profound and then to have the scientific research that demonstrates that there was something really measurable that happens because we, we've had some pretty dramatic effects even with much smaller events in the Absolutely. past. So I'm expecting to see some really robust results on the, the science This side. is real science. I mean, people like Konstantin Karatkov and Bill Tiller and Dean Radin have unbelievably powerful published peer-reviewed studies on these things. There are electromagnetic field effects, as, as um, Constantine would call them, that are created when people gather in a state of coherence. Mm -hmm. And also when you connect to certain aspects of earth energy, it gets amplified. When a particularly powerful um, speaker presents, such as Miguel will be doing, and when the earth comes into alignment and when all these potential field effects start to gather, they're absolutely tangible, they're absolutely measurable. Mm -hmm. Constantine will be measuring live in both Teotihuacan and Chichen Itza. Mm -hmm. So we'll be reporting results mm -hmm. as that electromagnetic uh, field effect happens. He kind of calls it ground zero, um, uh, but as, as it builds around ground zero, he'll have sensors. He's already had them established okay. in an array around those areas, and he'll be reporting as the field effect grows. That's very cool. The idea is, is that if we get enough of these places connected, which is what you've been doing at mm -hmm. birth and shift, that you'll have a multiplier effect. Like Gre Greg Braden, who will be in Chichen Itza, talks about um, kind of like a tipping point. Mm -hmm. And if you get enough of these in alignment, the entire globe lights up.
Yeah. So we're going to see. We're going to see. We're going to We're going to be. Well, we're, gonna be. <laughs> well, we're all in the business of helping create the tipping points. So, Stephen, I'd love for you to speak a little bit about music. One of the things that Agape is, excels at is, is extraordinary music, and you've devoted much of your life to that. And so what role do you see music in this collective awakening, this activation of love and light, that the, the resonance around the planet? Because we, we, we've tended to lead a little bit more with the kind of the big speakers and everything, uh -huh. but the music, I think, is absolutely, is actually probably more important to create that unified mm -hmm. field. Sure, I, lo I love that question, and I love music, of course, and I, and I understand how, and I think everyone watching and everyone in their life understands how music is such an emotional uh, connector for them, right? That they, they hear a song and they, they can see in their mind's eye a wonderful moment in their lives that it, rem that it reminds them of. So, so music is a very powerful opening uh, it, it just opens people up to to receptivity. Mm -hmm. So and and depending upon what the lyrics are there, there's a way that it can actually now that you have this openness from the musical aspect of it can convey important wisdom messages. So are you want me to speak to what the music is in? Well, you, you can talk high level music... and then bring it down into what's happening at Agape. Okay, so at Agape, of course, music <laughs> has always been a critical piece of what Agape is always about. And and really at the center of Agape, we have these two extraordinary artists and mm -hmm. teachers. Michael Bernard Beckwith and Ricky Byers Beckwith. They are now married. They didn't begin that way. Mm. They began their relationship as co-creators. Oh, I didn't know uh, that. <laughs> and, uh, and, and Ricky came in and, was, and began, I think, at Agape some 20 plus years ago. Agape has been uh, operating for 26 years, wow. just recently our 26th anniversary. And, and she came in and became the choir director. And she was always an artist and a composer and a singer. But she found at Agape a new place for her expression to really to really grow and come forth. You know, wow. she, she began to, it started out, she wanted to be a pop singer like many people, wow. right, or a soul singer. Um, so she and Michael began collaborating, and in that collaboration came forth all of the great songs and many of the people who were in uh, Unity Churches and in Centers for Spiritual Living and other you know, spiritual centers know their songs. They're very, very popular. They've written together. So we have Ricky as an extraordinary artist. We have the Agape and she's a, And she's our music director. She's our right? music director and she'll be performing wow. and they'll right, be doing right. a lot of their wonderful songs that, that they've wrote, written together. Uh, and then we have the Agape International Choir, mm -hmm. which is world-renowned, which appeared uh, with uh, President Obama at his inauguration mm -hmm. and at his uh, at the Democratic National Convention when he was first inaugurated, and then and then you know at the presidential uh, inauguration, so or uh, nominated, excuse me. Um, and they've they've appeared with Will I Am, they've appeared with John Legend, mm -hmm. and they've done all kinds of wonderful things. They've been used in the the CNN Heroes Show wow. as the as the choir. So they're just an extraordinary group of people holding consciousness and singing beautifully. I mean, we wow. have people in the choir who have their own careers as you know as a, as individuals as soloists who are so talented. So people who tune in will see you know Ricky the choir, and they're going to see a level of excellence mm -hmm. you know that I know they'll feel and that I know they'll recognize. Recognize. And, and we then, have other people exciting. like Freddie, yeah, Freddie Other people, we have wow. Freddie Ravel, and you know, who has been a member, you know, attended a Gopi for many him. years, teaches people through his music, uh, uh, you know, teaches spiritual practices through his music. Former keyboardist of Santana. Yes, yes. exactly. Uh, yeah. We have uh, Jamie Lula, who's really renowned on this circuit, is going to sing Imagine. Uh, there's a lot of musical components. That, Oza that Motley. Oza, Oza Motley. Oh, I forgot about Oza Motley. So, you know, for those of you who know, an incredible Latin band, and, and the, the interesting synergy of this is their name is actually a Toltec name uh, <laughs> that means passion, fire. Uh, so when I first talked to them about, well, I said, it sounds like I heard your name was made up. And, and the leader of the band said, no, 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 we drew it directly from the Toltec teachings, uh -huh. which are so you know, oh, adjacent to the Mayan teachings <laughs> that we're talking about, mm -hmm. and it's passion, and it's fire, uh -huh. and it's activation. And I said, that's, oh, really that's cool. what this is all about. Uh, so so we great. have that. Well, let's, well, let's, take, let's, wow. take, well, let's riff off the Toltec. <laughs> I, I love because, because part of what I also want you to share is Absolutely. the power of, if there's a Toltec lineage that's Absolutely. activating through Don Miguel Absolutely. at... Teotihuacan, which Correct. is really central for this whole planetary activation. Absolutely. So the entire Ruiz family is going to be leading people through power journeys, well, beginning tomorrow. <laughs> and they've actually just left on the plane for Teotihuacan already. Um, but those power journeys are going to be at Teotihuacan, which is one of the two major um, pyramids in, mm -hmm. in the pantheon of the Mayan culture. Um, Teotihuacan it has a special place because it's that place where humans dream themselves into gods. And that Toltec passion of discovering your own 
artistry and your mastery marries with that, and that's been Miguel's lifelong work. Mm -hmm. And so he'll be leading people through power journeys building into next Friday on the 21st, a ceremony at, the, at Teotihuacan that will help people to really kind of recognize that it's time to awaken the giant, mm -hmm. which is to kind of put to, put to rest an era of fear and darkness and superstition and to step into your own light and to awaken your own power. Mm -hmm. And that is the ultimate expression of the Toltec lineage is mm -hmm. to step into your own light and your mm -hmm. own artistry and power. Yeah. And so yeah. he and Ava Ruiz and uh, Miguel Jr and also Don Jose and Gabriel Nosevich and Andres Portillo and many others will be gathered there in an experience over that Friday, which will be broadcast on, right. of course, Birth and Shift. That's great. Well, so wait, people, are, you're going to be able to access all of this because we're going to broadcast it all live from Agape to Teotihuacan to around the world. It's going to be so exciting. Mm -hmm. um, the Gape event, birth2012la.com. People are, you're going to want to come to this because mm -hmm. it's going to be lights out fantastic mm -hmm. from start to finish. Um, there's amazing stuff happening on Friday, wow. our, our gala ceremony, music runs throughout, wisdom, top teachers, ceremony, mm -hmm. magic. And then we're going to be uh, one of the key lo partner locations in Teotihuacan, bringing in as much as we can from there. Mm -hmm. And also Don Miguel, I know, is going to be traveling to uh, Chichen Itza. Yeah. So <laughs> helping to deliver a message, you want to say? Absolutely. No, we can... We We'll have um, footage and, and coverage. We have the scientists and the people traveling with us from one pyramid to the next to Chichen Itza yeah, the very next day. That's really cool. <laughs> and, well, and art, remember, as art. well. And the, we yeah, have art. art and with uh, Andrew jo Jones, Android Jones, and Fadroid. Wow. Uh, we're going to have dance. So, yeah. you know, one of the things that we teach at Agape is that creativity and joy are the evidence of spirit, uh -huh. the evidence Perfect. of the presence, Interesting. the Perfect. evidence of God's presence. Perfect. Right? Yeah. And so we are all about celebration. And, wow. and certainly the 22nd at Agape and right. what you're mm -hmm. going to be doing yeah. and what people are going to be doing all around the globe. So what you'll be able to do at Birth 2012 is dial in and see what's going on down with what Doug is doing in, in, uh, in Chichen Itza and Teotihuacan, mm -hmm. what people are doing at the Mayan, with right. the Egyptian pyramids. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be extraordinary to see how people celebrate all mm -hmm. over the right. world. Yeah, and one thing that I'm just noticing is the theme Toltec, as Don Miguel said, actually means artist. Right. And so uh, so the, artist, the artistry uh, is at the core. It's, it's so like funny. each of us stepping in as artists, that we right. are painting this tableau That's exactly of whatever right. happens. <laughs> it's not just watching it. It's like you out there Amazing. are co-creating it. Absolutely. Co-creating <laughs> is the word. And, and I'd love to just add to what you said about about the science mm -hmm. aspect because I took the usual aspect into the music business which is I went to MIT and studied oh. studied molecular biology oh, wow. right so that's the usual route right I'm joking here of course into the music business but one of the things that I've found in these teachings and I want to speak to people who think they may have heard this is some wild weird fringe new age way of being mm -hmm. right but but what Doug was speaking to is that there's so much tremendously good science mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. underscored right. and talks like quantum physics is really the field mm -hmm. It talks about how is it that energy, you know, really creates our reality. Correct. And, and I want to share a, a really brief example for those people who maybe really aren't familiar with this that I just heard that I thought was so good. We all know that when we think an embarrassing thought, mm -hmm. right, that our cheeks get red. Mm -hmm. So there is a direct evidence of physical manifestation Absolutely. of our thoughts. Absolutely. Now take that beyond and you mm -hmm. can begin to see yeah. where how your whole world is created out of what your thoughts are. One and big, that is one now big thought, science. One big thought of love. That's yeah, what we're going to exactly. have for three days and a lot of celebration. Well, thank you two so much for joining. The I'm energy enjoying. is so palpable coming through both of you. Yes. It's, it's wonderful mm -hmm. to partner with both of you Pleasure. and, and just, uh, just feel really graced by what you're both manifesting too. It's, it's, it's a joy. So, so thank you and let's, let's rock. It's our joy, Steve. It's an pleasure. pleasure to be here. Pleasure, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I have some time here to share with you just an update on the latest activities that are happening around the world. So the first thing I want to share about is Unify. We've been aware for a while that another large group has been assembling, sort of building off in some ways the energy of Occupy. Many people who are connected with Occupy are taking it to the next octave mm -hmm. and saying, why not? Occupy is always a little bit positional. It's against something else versus Unify, where we're mm -hmm. all coming together. So we, in the last 24 hours, have really made, have made huge steps towards unifying with Unify. So we become, instead of two different things, become one big thing, which is all activating this around the world. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting about that is they had been scripting carefully and working with locations for 14 hours of programming, mainly preceding the, the 
33 mm -hmm. hours we were already building. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because when we <clears> kept <throat> creating flyers and posters, people kept sli slipping in 48-hour webcasts. And I kept having to correct that. And I was like, why does that keep cropping up? And then when we partner up with them, we end up with 47 hours. And it probably, you know, it'll probably right. end up being 48 hours. <laughs> because it was like the universe was saying, hey, don't forget the rest of this, uh, this webcast. What they're going to be doing is focusing on what's called the galactic activation point mm -hmm. or galactic alignment point, which mm -hmm. is 311 a.m. Pacific time on the 21st. And so that's going to, uh, it's considered a prime time for the uh, opening of the energies of the, of the earth. And so a lot of people are going to be gathered in ritual, prayer, and meditation at that time. With a particular focus, I think, in Mexico, mm -hmm. Chichen Itza, also in Jerusalem now. In the last couple weeks, Jerusalem is really activated in a big way as a, as a essentially an Abrahamic family reunion with the rabbis and the priests and the imams coming together from multiple faiths to celebrate our shared divinity, really, and our shared humanity so that we are templating this unification around the world. And so what had happened is that Unified started working with the same event producer, Elisa Hava, in Jerusalem. They started activating on Friday, and we started activating a concert with her on Saturday night. And I was just sort of saying, okay, well, clearly, we're, we're, we just need to kind of unify these things up. And they've been uh, building, we'll be able to tell you soon, about like a lot of really high-level celebrities are getting on board wow. the Unify. Ashton Kutcher just started uh, tweeting about it. He's actively uh, recruiting other people out there. As far as we know, there's, there's a lot of things that are just about ready to pop. And we're, so we're in the midst of seeing how to weave our, our two efforts together so that there's a unified global webcast. Um, we're planning for that at Birth 2012 TV and that we're advocating people come together at this 311 moment as well as noon. So there's going to be, their primary build is on that 21st early up until noon Pacific time mm -hmm. on the 21st. And so that's going to be, I think, the new... The noon moment is going to be a really powerful moment around the world where a lot of meditators, med mobs, flash mobs coming together to, to meditate together. It's sort of the next, it's the next octave of the meditation of, of Occupy. Instead of Occupy and protest, let's all, let's all occupy a public place and meditate together. It's a really beautiful impulse. And so we're seeing this as a, a really profound moment to have the, the unification. It's happened with a few different groups already. Mm -hmm. So gradually, all the little fiefdoms are coming down, and we're all just like, okay, we're on one big team yep. helping to activate this uh -huh. thing for planet Earth. Uh -huh. And it's right at the same time as there's more media coming in. The Associated Press ran a story about both the fearful apocalyptic stuff and the positive uh, movements. And I was quoted in that. And there's a sense of like, you know, a growing sense in the mainstream media and that there's a there's sense, oh, there's there's something really important going on, and there's a lot of wacky stuff going on, but let's focus on the positive as well. So that's a really big new development and very exciting. And um, yeah, so I wanted to share about that. I also wanted to share uh, Elisa Hava, as I mentioned, in Jerusalem. They've got a tremendous amount of momentum. They just went live with an Indiegogo campaign uh, yesterday to raise more money for a concert that, that it will be broadcast right before the uh, event we're doing at Agape, the gala ceremony. And I want to share a little about why I think that's so important. Um, if we look at the, the troubles in the world and the polarizations, there's so much of it has been built around a kind of a, a religious fracturing, and especially in the Abrahamic family, which is all sourced from the same family. So we've got this essentially long-term, multiple thousand years family squabble that's created a lot of destruction and polarization. Us, us versus Muslims, us versus Jews, Muslims versus Jews. It's sort of like it's been a mess. So we have, if we're going to really birth a new era, there has to be a healing of that schism. There has to be a reunification unification of that family. And to do that in a big way from Jerusalem feels symbolically very important. And so I encourage you, if you go to Indiegogo.com, you can search for Harmony in the Holy Land, support that campaign so they can do it in as big and beautiful a way as possible with as many spiritual leaders gathered. Because it's not just who's there, like it's not just what's broadcast out, but it's like getting all mm -hmm. the people in the room. So there is this sense of a unified moment where all the different streams come together as one. Mm -hmm. So that's gonna be really beautiful and really important. I also just wanted to mention some of the other cool things that are happening. Uh, we'll be hearing more from, uh, we have Shiva Ray is activating a, uh, yoga, a global mala yoga wave around the world, 7 a.m. in every local time zone, a practice encouraging yogis to join together in sun salutations and a practice that is, greets this new dawn and helps to activate this. So again, the same principle of creating a wave of coherence around the world. I also just got in a, um, a, a 
affirmation from Unity Village in Missouri, which is the headquarters for the global unity movement. Uh, over a million people are part of the unity churches. So there's going to be a global affirmation at the same time that we all sort of do together. And we also have heard from the uh, Brahma Kumaris, their spiritual head, a 94-year-old Dadi Janki, who's a, a woman who's a spiritual head. It's a largely a, a woman-run, uh, million-person organization very pure, blessed nuns around the world who are just spreading a very loving energy. And altogether, they, they are activating this beautiful wave through their networks and looking to use their centers as hubs for this birth. And they're 94-year-olds. Um, so, I mean, 94-year-olds, that makes, that makes our 82-year-old uh, midwife, Barbara Marks Hubbard, look like a spring chicken. So uh, we're very excited to have that as part of the 97, broadcast. Actually. 97, 97? Wow. 97, I, yes. I stand corrected. <laughs> so we are, we're looking forward to that. We're also just uh, super excited by the, the number of different sites that are activating. Uh, we keep hearing about new ones coming online, like um, I heard about Cuba coming online oh, um, yeah. just, just the last couple hours. There's a, there's a major event at Titicaca with Bolivian indigenous elders that the Unify folks had planned to cover. Some of these events that we, we had th heard about kind of in the, in the ethers but hadn't actually established a bridge with, they already had bridges with Unify. So as we bring, as we Unify with Unify, I think we're going to get a much more comprehensive coverage of everything happening worldwide on those two days. And Unify just joined in with Teo as of yesterday. And Unify just, so everybody's unifying. <laughs> you're, you're hearing it live. It's all happening live. We're all unifying and getting over any of our polarities and, and yep. fiefdoms. And you, you just unify with your family, with your friends, with your community. Reach out, form a hub, get involved. It's, uh, it's a potent time. At least spread the word. We're going to have a new video coming out that's going to help spread the word about what's happening at Agape and around the world. It's really an extraordinary moment for humankind. So we're excited to celebrate it with you. Sing a song today. One of your Sing a song right? today. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for joining. And thank you all for being part of the Birth 2012 movement.